Uh, I used to be rubber band catapult guy. This year I am precision ping pong propulsion guy. I don't say that fast anymore. So this year, the new event, that's a sample of the outer bucket right here. And there's the bucket that will be sitting in the middle of that waiting pool with no water in it. That is your target this year. Your target uh, will be surrounded by eight teams who will all shoot simultaneously this year. Unlike rubber band where we shot one team at a time and scored them. All eight teams are going to fire their ping pong balls at the same time in essentially a timed five minute event I mean, in terms of the shooting time. Uh, your teams will impound their devices, their ping pong balls and data sheets in the morning. Don't be late because you will get penalized, I think 20 points if you're late. So you want to get in there and uh, get in you know, so that you don't have that happen. When you come in, as uh, when the teams line up, other than lining out the door like they typically do, we'll prep eight teams at the end of the, the, the well, I guess that'd be the beginning of the line, or at the front of the line. When they're there and we re we're ready to start shooting, those kids will be told to get their devices and then they'll be told, line up behind the ready line, which is this outer set of stripes here. And they will stand until told they can step forward to this inner line and start shooting. Uh, so they'll have their devices in hand, everything in hand. When they're told to step forward, the whistle will go off. They will set up their device, fire off 10 ping pong balls. Uh, with a minute to go, they'll get a warning. At the end of five minutes, there'll be a whistle that says, no more shooting, the event is done. Anything that gets into the white bucket or the bathtub scores. Anything outside that doesn't come into play whatsoever. So there probably will be balls everywhere. <laughs> Those will be ignored. We will score the ones in the middle with a higher value we will score colored balls with a higher value than the white balls. The ones, the <coughs> colored balls will always be scored higher than the white balls, but uh, in the middle they count for more obviously than in the, in the tub itself. So pretty much that's kind of it. You can, the device, the device that you're going to use is going to be uh, used an elastomeric something, device, or piece of rubber, or rubber band, or bungee cord, or something, to propel the ping pong ball, the balls. You can, you can only shoot them one at a time in that five minute period. You can not use muzzle, you know, uh, gas charged, uh, metal springs, it has to be elastomeric, whatever. You cannot use magazines where you have all 10 in a cartridge and use them like a Nerf gun and no rapid fire, semi-automatic, automatic. It's one shot at a time in that five minute period. Um, when you color your balls, if you haven't bought one pre-marked, it'll have your team number on it um, on all 10 balls. You will only be able to impound 10 and we'll check, make sure that they're not adulterated more than just having the number put on with a sharpie and the, also the stripe which is from what I gather fun to put on uh, on a small tiny little thing and get it on there straight but we want the numbers fairly clear because when we grade you know when we're trying to score we want to be able to read those numbers pretty quick to get them in the appropriate scoring buckets that we'll have at the score table so uh, I'm going to just open this conversation up and let you guys fire a bunch of questions at me and I'll just do my best. Yes? Has this event ever been done in the history of Science Olympia at the elementary level? Not to my knowledge. No place on the planet. This is right. You are a pioneer <laughs> this year. So, how, yeah. do get, how do we get a team number? Can you just pick one? That's already been when your team was registered. 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 So you oh, got a team number. Even though you don't know what it is yet. Yes. Yeah. 
In fact, if you go to the website. Yeah. Ooh, this is a, this is an easy crowd. Mm -hmm. Those are the only questions. Yeah. Are there examples of what what devices look, look like or De deliberately no? There is some on the website this morning. Uh, were they for ping pong ball launch or were they for from like the rubber band thing? Because we did have like a, an idea. But yeah, so you no, thought a ping pong launcher? Yeah. Be careful that it falls in the criteria of rubber band. Yeah. Well, the one I saw did have like a rubber beam launcher, but yeah. there's a lot out there. But I mean, I the device itself, there, other than you have to use an elastomeric membrane to launch the ping pong ball itself, um, there's nothing that says the size of the thing, the weight of the thing, or how you construct it, whether uh, somebody asked in the previous session, does it have to sit on the floor, can I hold it in my hand? That's all fair game for your young kids to brainstorm on and figure out how they're going to get from here to here. Uh, you're going to get mid-air collisions. You're going to get balls bouncing in and then maybe bouncing out. Oh, well, you know, it's all part of the charm of the... The same thing like rubber being catapult where their entire machine has to be behind the line. Yeah, okay. yeah, there will be. You'll be starting out back here on the ready line with your equipment. And when the uh, whistle goes for your five minute shoot, everyone's shooting at the same time, you're gonna step forward, set up your machine, you got five minutes to get all 10 balls out to the target, whether you use the air, the floor, the balls, although that would be difficult given that we're in the gym, uh, then at the end of five minutes, everything ceases and it's up to the scoring at that point. Yes? Um, just to be clear, that four to eight meters, it is in meter intervals. There's no in between. Single meter, there's no half meters this year. It's single meters from four to eight. Okay. So, it's, and it's from the center of the, the white bucket okay. out to this line. It's either four, five, six, seven, or eight. Okay. And then this is two meters away, I believe. So. Is, is, is there any stipulation of the size of this thing? Of the, the machine? The machine. No. We, I mean, so we can roll it in on casters. If you want to bring in a bus, I suppose you could, but there's some logistical problems with that, I think. If you want to keep it kind of practical because you're basically going to be surrounded by teams on the other side. Uh, you will also be required to have your kids wear safety glasses only because you're going to have teams shooting basically into each other, you know, across from each other. So keep that as part of your, that's in the rules, by the way, which are online. Yes. So even if they wear glasses, they still need to see the glasses. Uh, yes, I would say so. Yes. yes. The rules say you wanted two kids per team. Per team. Yeah. I have nine kids. For for the district tournaments, that's okay. Right. But in May, you it's have only two. There's only two. So at the districts, if I have four, three teams with two and one team with three, is that okay or no? Good. What's your school? South River Elementary. Uh, does, do you know if you actually registered um, all the teams? Can I'm you? I'm newbie. Okay. I'm no that's, that's a logistical question. It's about my paper. Yeah, we'll, we'll have one. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, uh, can you explain how the event works in terms of the distance? Uh, so it can be anywhere between four and eight. Four and eight meters. So so what will happen is this. You'll come in. You will. We will, when we impound your device, don't, and again, don't be late so you don't get penalized points, we will look at your device and determine, is it within the context of the rules? Is it dangerous? Because if it's dangerous, let's say somebody misreads the rules, which never happens, and they come in with a garage door spring that's fully tensioned, I'm going to say, you can't shoot that. You're not going to shoot today. Because, number one, it doesn't meet the rules, and number two, it's kind of dangerous. And we do have that stipulation uh, in general in the rules. So when you read, you'll see that. Obviously, people may have questions, is this dangerous, is it not? We'll have to make that judgment. So in districts, right, I've seen, uh, for example, with rubber band, somebody came in and they, we had said, build it out of wood. They didn't read the rules. They came in and did it like last year. They built it out of metal. I said, well, you have till May change this device to a wood device 
and then you can comply. So same thing would apply. If it's dangerous, we're not going to let you shoot, but you'll, you'll have your device there, you'll have your ping pong balls there, we'll look at them, they're numbered correctly, the team number matches up, the stripe is there, they're clear to read, you have 10 that are in, looks to be in good shape, you're impounded, you're done until you, your team shows up. Then we'll line eight teams up at a time in all of these outer positions. Tell them to step forward, tell them to shoot, tell them to stop, you're done. But the distance? The distance will be set. Once everybody's impounded, we'll either write on a chart or just tell the teams as they're ready to line up, this is your distance. Every team will get the same distance. And they stay at that distance for the full five minutes like Correct. There's no, yeah, unlike like rubber that. band where we actually changed it to two different, we're not doing that this year. Okay. Might be different next year, but... And so they don't know what the distance will be allowed to be prepared for a few different distances. Right. That's why we want the data chart, you know, they're going to practice and they're going to say, well, okay, we built this machine and we, if we do it this way, we can get this distance. If we do it that way, we get that distance. You want to record that information. So when I, when you come in and we say, it's going to be six meters. Oh, okay, I know what I have to do. You're at the ready, as soon as the thing goes, you set up accordingly for that. So you're all prepared. Yes. What happens if we construct a device and it's got a rubber band and the rubber band breaks? Is there a backup? Okay. If, you, if you have in your impounded uh, box an extra rubber band, and in five minutes they can remove this one and strap that one on, if it's impounded, that is part of the device that part of something. Somebody else asked, what, what if I need two different sizes, and I have two different pre-made, and I said, our feeling is, no, you have one unit, but maybe you can detach something and reattach something. You've got five minutes for 10 balls, which is still pretty good, 30 seconds a ball. So have them practice if they got to do something like that. Sir. Besides springs and a lot, um, metal triggers, is there any restrictions on the materials that we're going to be using? To make the device? Uh, to make the device or to tripod it or anything like that? Not, not this year. Other, you still need some elastomer, uh, elastomeric membrane, rubber band, however you want to call it. Okay. Something that will impart the energy other than metal spring and air, and air cartridges and things like that to propel the ping pong ball. So, I mean, I, in my mind, I'm thinking rubber bands, bungee cords, exercise. Bands, I don't know, what, whatever is out but there. Any way, that, any way that you can impart kinetic energy from a elastrometric Elastomeric piece of material, material is acceptable. I would say, yeah. And yeah, if there's an issue, we'll let you know. That's part of the, I guess, the benefit of having districts is if you have to tweak something, you can. But for the most part, yeah. Try not to, re I mean, we've left a lot to interpretation. But at the same time, sometimes people start to over-analyze and, you know, what if, but ask questions. And if you have a question, please post it online. And if, if something needs clarification, because this is new to us this year, too, um, send it on out, and we will respond online so it will be part of the official rule uh, body for this year. Next year, we can't guarantee yet. So, yes? Basically, no. After everybody's impounded, <laughs> then we will post either post or tell the teams as they line up uh, so to, to have eight, a group of eight. If two. they did have some kind of device with a different band for a different dis distance, it would all have to be in the box when they impound. Correct. And, and they have to make the adjustment before they start. All right. Basically, while they're shooting. While they're essentially, shooting. while they're shooting. So that's not yeah. Ideal. Yeah. Okay. Are you saying you can't have a trigger? No. Oh, we can have a trigger. We have a trigger. It can be made out of metal, plastic, wood, anything. There's nothing in the rules that says how to make it. Now, just for clarification, last year with the rubber bands from the launch line, it, it wasn't just the base of the equipment that needed to be behind the line. Basically, everything, everything has to be behind the line. Okay, so if you have a base that perhaps has like a nozzle that sticks out of the nozzle has everything, to be... Yeah, everything, every part of the device has to be behind the line. Yeah, and I believe that's in the rules, so, yes? Is this another one, is this going to be the same as the rubber band where you just show up and go, or is it going to be a, a time 
meeting this year for team stuff? Uh, I don't believe it's it's basically an open okay. uh, like event like past years, but because of the, the length of the lines for this particular well, we're like rubber band, we all know it's always a long line. We'll still probably have that issue, but we're going to do a little Disney line, and they're loading eight teams at a time. So they're going to load, shoot, get off the next eight. So you've only got 80 teams times 10, and maybe 10, 15 minutes tops. This, this event should not last near as long as rubber band. Yes, because, because it's not all, if there's not eight teams there, would you still run off? I would say maybe, uh, but it really, it's part of that's going to be learned, I guess, okay. along the way. Because if there's like a two hour gap where we're just sitting around and there's six teams here waiting to go and some of them have other events, we'll probably say, you know what, let's get these six on and go. But we're not going to benefit somebody strategically by saying, well, they only want to shoot by themselves. I said, no, you shoot as a game because that's part of the charm of the, uh, and the chaos of the event. That, and there will be ping pong balls everywhere, <laughs> just, just so you know. And yes, you may have to buy new ping pong balls after a district if you've lost one because I don't know what to tell you. They're just going to be bouncing everywhere. This, this is two kids to a Two kids to a team, max, yeah. I mean, in districts, you might have more so that they get the experience, but at the main event in May, so one team, two, uh, two players. Can each kid have a device or one device? No, it's one device. I mean, so I think somebody in the previous session asked if they could, like, share the shooting responsibilities. I said, well, I suppose. There's nothing in the rules that says no, but it just means in your five minutes, you say, okay, I'm going to shoot the first five, or I'm going to shoot the white ones, and only you can shoot the orange ones, however you shoot. I mean, if that if that's how you want to handle it, maybe somebody handles the device and the other one handles however the stuff, that's all up to you guys, but two guys or two gals. Boy, this is an easy crowd, this one. Everybody is all clear in mind? One quick question. Sure. So we can... Um, we can observe the event, right? Yeah. Okay. You, you can, once the kids are in line and ready to go, you're not on the floor. Right. You're going to be up in the bleachers, sharing and go team go, but you can't coach from the sidelines. Same kind of rules apply. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so coaches basically let their kids have at it? Yeah, it's like the SAT test when you were in high school, right? <laughs> once you're there, you've been studying. If you don't know it now, it's too bad, Charlie, you get in there and do your best. You don't need mom and dad to, you're out there to show them what you know. So, yeah. As, as eager as you guys want to be, you got to sit quietly and, and just cheer them on from the sidelines. So. Boy, this was the easiest crowd ever. <laughs> uh, Signing sheets are up here. Okay, well. Interesting to see what you guys come up with this year.